Today, using Apple Motion, we're gonna recreate the famous Batman transition. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this right now and slap in whatever logo you like. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna select the Final Cut transition, and it's gonna be important that we keep the duration really short. I happen to like how two seconds looks. From there, you can leave your preset and frame rate at whatever you typically work with, then push Open. Once we're in motion, go ahead and select Transition B. We need to make sure that it is the entire duration of our transition. With it selected, go ahead and push I. That is going to extend it out to the beginning of the transition. Then select transition A and go to the very end of your project and go ahead and push O. That will extend out transition A over to the end as well. Now the first thing we need to do is extend out the edges of both transition clips. If we select transition A and go to the inspector, then I rotate it, you'll notice how there are very sharp edges. And if we rotate both clips at the same time, they're both going to have a black edge. So that's going to really ruin the effect. To extend out the edges, right click on transition A and select group. With that group selected, come over to the left side under the group tab and make sure fixed resolution is enabled. This is a very important step. Now that we've done that, go ahead and go up to filters and go down to tiling, then select collide a tile and make sure that is placed directly on the group, not on transition A inside of the group. With collider tile selected, go ahead and find the width and height options. Let's change the width over to 960 by 540. Now these two values need to be half of whatever your project is at. So this project is at 1080p. If I were making a 4K project, I would need to make this 1920 by 1080. Now that I've done that, you can kind of see how it's replicating the edges. However, transition A is actually too large. If we were to apply this into Final Cut Pro, it would actually be zoomed in and it would just have this weird mirroring effect around the edge. So let's go to our properties with transition A selected and shrink that down to 50%. So now it's going to perfectly replicate all the edges of our clip. However, you'll see that these edges are very clearly inside of our project and everything is shrunk down too small. So with the group selected, we need to actually increase the scale of this by 200%. What this has done is if I take this group and rotate it, you'll notice that this group actually extends out past our video here so that we don't get any black edges, but it's still replicating all of those edges. All we need to do from here is actually apply all of the same steps to transition B. Right clicking on transition B, we'll select group. We'll make sure that it is a fixed resolution. We could take the collider tile effect from the first group, command C, then select the second group and push command V to paste it. Now, selecting transition B, we could go over to properties, shrink it down by 50%, and then we need to expand out group one by 200%. So now both of these will be in the same boat and if we rotate them, we won't have any black edges. Now that we've done that, we need to animate the cross dissolve between both clips. So selecting the transition A group, let's go ahead and add a keyframe to our opacity. Moving forward to the very end of our project, let's go ahead and drop the opacity down to 0%. So over the duration of our project, we will have this nice slow crossfade. Now that we have both groups set up, I'm just going to quickly rename them so we know what we're working with. So this will be transition A group, and then this will be transition B group. Now that those are both renamed, let's go ahead and collapse transition A and transition B. Right clicking on the main group that contains all of those, we're actually going to throw it into one more group. There's a very important reason for this. If I were to add a rotation parameter to this main group and then add a radial blur effect, which we'll use a little bit later, it's going to add all of these weird black edges. So this is just a way to bypass that. With the main group selected, let's go ahead and rename that to be rotation. Once we've done that, we can go on over to our properties and locate the rotation parameter. Clicking on this down arrow will select add a parameter behavior and we are going to select ramp. Ramp is a really valuable way to add in a nice smooth animation without having to bother with keyframes. Going over to the left side, we'll find the end value. We want this to spin a total of 10 times. So 10 times 360 degrees to get a full rotation would equal 3600 degrees. So let's go ahead and set the end value to 3600. If I push play, you'll see that we have this great rotation happening. However, it is currently at just one consistent speed and we want it to have a nice smooth ramp. So to achieve that, let's go ahead and find the curvature slider and drag that up to a full 100%.
Now if I push plate, you'll notice how it starts off slowly, picks up a bunch of speed, and then slopes off to a complete stop. Now that the rotation is set up, it's time to add in some motion blur. Now you definitely could come over to the right side, find the render settings, and enable motion blur. But this is going to add a whole bunch of computing power to your computer that's really unnecessary. So let's go ahead and just fake it with a blur effect. With our main group selected that holds all of the other groups inside of it, let's rename this to be the radial group. Going up to filters, we'll locate blur and then select radial blur. Move your playhead to the very beginning of your project and find the angle value inside of the radial blur. Set that down to zero degrees, then click to add a keyframe. Then we'll move to the middle of our project, which is one second because this is a two second project, and we'll just drag up the angle to a point where we're happy. I find somewhere around 38 to 40 degrees looks pretty good. Going to the very end, we can go ahead and drag this back down to zero degrees. So if we push play, we should have this nice little radial blur that takes over on our clip. The very last effect we're going to add is the nice little logo that pops into place. So let's go ahead and collapse all of these groups. Then we're going to select add object and we're going to select drop zone. Click and drag this drop zone over the top of our radial group and we can just rename this group to be the drop zone group. From there, go ahead and open up finder and locate whatever image file you want. Go ahead and just click and drag that file onto the drop zone. If I close Finder out, you'll see now that this drop zone has taken on the shape of my logo. And what's really great is inside of Final Cut Pro, we can go ahead and continue to use this drop zone to drop in whatever logo we may want. Selecting the drop zone group, go on over to your properties and locate the scale value. We're gonna click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and we're going to select oscillate. If I come on over to the right side, we can locate our keyframe editor and we can see how the oscillation is working. Currently, it's a little bit too long for our project duration. We'll come on over to the left side and locate the speed value. I'm gonna click and drag this up until that oscillation ends before the end of our project. So now we should have this nice slow ramp up and back down. However, if I push play, you'll notice how the logo is here just the entire time and we want it to come from nothingness. So selecting that drop zone, go ahead and slide back to the very beginning and set the scale value down to 0%. If I push play now, you can see how it animates in really, really nicely. So now all we need to do is go ahead and publish this over to Final Cut Pro. Go ahead and push Command S to save it. We'll just call it the Batman Transition and I'll throw it into whatever category I like. So I'll just do FCB Transitions and push Publish. So once we're inside of Final Cut Pro, if we go over to the transitions and locate the category we put it into, we can locate our Batman transition. I'm just gonna click and drag this onto my project, but you'll notice that it automatically set it to one second. If I push play, it's actually okay. It looks pretty great with this particular transition, but if you wanted to force it so Final Cut Pro always used the default transition length from Apple Motion, which would be two seconds, we would need to go back to Apple Motion, select the project, and then go over to properties and locate override FCP duration. I'll go ahead and enable that. I'll push command S to save it. Then we can jump back into Final Cut Pro and I'll go ahead and reapply the transition, which will take place over two seconds. So that is how to recreate the famous Batman transition. Of course, you'll need the audio elements, which you'll have to find online somewhere, but hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you in some way. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing. Also, you may wanna check out this video where I show you how to recreate a really cool looking pixel scan effect using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.